Today's lesson is about prime factorization, and we do have some more vocabulary words to study. Now, these are words that you should have run across in fifth grade, and that uh, one of them is prime number, another is composite number, prime factorization, and factor tree. Now, in order to determine whether something is prime and composite, uh, we need to understand what they mean. So uh, let's listen uh, to me read the description, and then we're going to look at a couple examples. A whole number that is has exactly two factors, one and itself, is a prime number. Now, a more specific definition would be a whole number that's greater than zero, uh, but also greater than one, because one does not have two factors. One has only one factor, uh, which is just one. So, um, there are some subtle differences in that definition. So that's a prime number. And then a number greater than one with more than two factors is a composite number. Now, to determine, determining the factors that something has, it's really important that we use our divisibility rules that we spent so much time studying and practicing earlier this year. So if I look at the number 13, it's a prime number because 1 times 13 is 13, just two factors. But the number 13 itself is not an even number, so you can't divide it by 2 and have a whole number as an answer. Uh, 3 is not a factor because 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 is not a factor because if I skip count by 4s, I skip over uh, 13. Uh, so 4, 8, 12, 16, that's not a factor of 4. It's not a factor of 5 because it doesn't end with 0 or 5. It's not a factor of 6 because it's not a factor of 2, and it's not a factor of 3. Now, 7 and 8 we'll learn about later, but if you know your uh, actual facts for 7 and 8, you'll know that you're going to skip count over 13 when you count by 7s, and you're going to skip count over 13 when you count by 8s. It's not a factor of 9 because it's not a factor of, two, of 3. 1 plus 3 is 4, and that is not a multiple of 9. It's not a multiple of 10 because it doesn't end with a 0. So you see how all of those things that you should have memorized will help you determine uh, factors and whether something's prime or composite. Over here, we have an example of a composite number. 1 times 9 is 9, but also 3 times 3 is 9, so this would be a composite number. Now, we're going to see examples of prime factorization and factor tree on the next page, so please turn to the next page. So to review the definition of prime and composite, so that we can identify prime and composite numbers, Whole numbers are either prime or composite, but there are two exceptions. Zero and one are neither prime nor composite. Zero uh, does not have two factors that multiply together to equal zero. It has an infinite number of factors that you multiply uh, by itself to make zero. Also, zero cannot be divided by itself. Nothing can be divided by zero. So. Zero is not considered either prime nor, nor composite. One is also not prime because it only has one factor. One times one is one, and that's the same number repeated. So it's not prime or composite. Fun fact. All right, so let's look at some examples. State whether each number is prime, composite, or neither, and explain. 35. Okay, we know that 1 times 35 equals 35, but we're trying to determine whether it's composite and has another factor. So let's look at the, what it ends with. It ends with 5. So thinking of our divisibility rules, what is it definitely going to be able to be divided by if it ends with a 5? Answer that for me now. Anything that ends with a 5 or a 0 is a multiple of 5, and so 5 is one of the factors. So the factors of 35 are 1, 5, 7, because 5 times 7 equals 35, and 35. So if it has more than two factors, what is this? A prime, composite, or neither? Answer, please. You are correct. This is a composite number. Now let's look at number 2, the number 17. The factors of number 17 are... 1 and 17, let's think about our divisibility rules. Would this be an even number and be divisible by 2? 
go ahead through all of the divisibility rules and let's figure out how many factors 17 has. Answer that for me now. How many factors does 17 have? Okay, so once you go through all the divisibility rules, um, none of them fit it. So it has exactly two factors, which makes it a prime number. Okay, we're going to do the next three examples and determine whether they are prime, composite, or neither, and we're going to explain why. So let's go ahead and look at A. Think about the divisibility rules. Is this prime, composite, or neither? A is composite, and the reason why it ends with the number 5, that means it is... A multiple of 5, 5 times 11 equals 55, besides 1 times 55, composite number. Now let's go ahead and look at B. 130, is that prime, composite, or neither? Please explain. Okay, this number is definitely composite. Uh, one reason ends with a 0, which means it's going to be uh, a, a multiple of 10. It's also a multiple of 5. It's also a multiple of 2 because it's an even number. So this has many, many factors besides just two. Now for C, is this number 19, prime, composite, or neither? Please explain. Okay, for 19, it's definitely a prime number for a couple different reasons. Uh, it does have two factors, 1 times 19. Uh, also, thinking about my divisibility rules, it doesn't fit any of those. Plus, I know my basic multiplication facts, and the number 19 never comes up. So this is definitely a prime number. Okay, so our first skill was determining whether what something was prime, composite, or neither. And our second skill is going to be to generate equivalent expressions using prime factorization. Every composite number can be written as a product of prime numbers. This is called prime factorization. A factor tree is a diagram that can be used to find the prime factorization of a number. You can generate equivalent expressions by using prime factorization. All right, so for example three, here's an example of someone using a factor tree to determine all the prime factors of 120. Understand that there's more than one way to do a factor tree. This particular person decided to choose these two factors first, but you could have chosen 3 times 40 or um, 2 times 60. There are different ways of doing this factor tree, but they decided, you know what, I know that 12 divided by 6 is 2, so that's 6 times 20. Then we know that 6 is a composite number because 2 times 3 is 6, but we know that 2 is a prime number because the only way you can get it is 1 times 2. 3 is a prime number, so we're done with those two numbers. Now we come back to 20. And again, this could have been 2 and 10, but they decided to do 4 and 5. 5 is a prime number. The only way you can get it is multiplying 1 times 5. And then um, 4 can be generated with two prime numbers, 2 times 2. So these are all prime numbers. Okay, so let's go back and look over here. So uh, we end up with this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and write that for you. Um, let me turn my pen back on. So basically, once you get all your prime factors, and it doesn't matter what order because ours will be in a different order if we choose different factors for our tree. So 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 5. What I like to do to make sure that I have them all written out is as I write them out, okay, 2, 3, 2, 2, 5. So I wrote each of them one time. Now you do put them in order from least to greatest. Typically when you write this expression out, it helps you notice that there are some numbers that are factors that kind of repeat and they're the same number. So uh, we're going to uh, rewrite this in a different way uh, by using 2 as a base, so 2 to the 1, 2, 3, third power. And then once we get rid of these, then we'll end up with 3 times 5. So 2 to the third power times 3 times 5 is an equivalent expression that equals 120. So in example four, we're going to practice doing a factor tree. It says to write the number that you want to be factored on top. 
they've decided that one of the factors of 36 is 3, which is true because 3 plus 6 is 9. That's a multiple of 3. So what is the other factor? 3 times what equals 36? Answer that for me now. Okay, so if you said 12, that's correct. Now looking at the factor 3, is that prime or composite? That is definitely a prime number. Only 1 times 3 equals 3. So we're going to actually end up bringing this all the way down to the bottom because we're done with this number. So the number 12, they've decided that one of the factors of uh, 12 is 4, which is true because 4, 8, 12. So what times 4 equals 12? Answer that for me now. Okay, that is correct. The answer is 3. 3 times 4 is 12. And again, we have a 3, so 3 is prime number, so we're going to bring it down. 1 times 3 is 3. That's the only two factors. Now we have the number 4. This is not a prime number because it's an even number, and the divisibility rules say that if something's even, it can be divided by what number? Answer that for me now. That's correct. Even numbers can be divided by the number 2, so 2 times 2 is 4. Now, 2 is a prime number, though, because the only way to get 2 is to multiply 2 times 1. So we're done. We only have prime numbers. So the last thing we're going to do is create our expression. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, now understand that 2 can be written as a base, 2, is used as a factor twice, so that's going to be the exponent of 2. So 2 to the second power, or 2 squared. The number 3 is a factor twice, so we're going to write 3 as a base, and then we're going to put 2 as the exponent because 3 is used twice. So the equivalent expression is going to be 2 to the second power, or 2 squared, times 3 squared, or 3 to the second power. If we're asked to find the prime factorization of a negative number, what you'll do is just put the positive opposite on the top of the factor tree and then go through and find all the factors. 7 times 10, 7 is a prime number, 10 is 2 times 5. So when we get our, all of our prime numbers, it's going to be 2 times 5 times 7. But because it's a negative number, all we have to do is add negative 1 to the front of it, and then you'll have your prime factorization. So negative 70 is equivalent to negative 1 times 2 times 5 times 7. All right, we're going to do one more example before we work on guided practice together during Math Live and before we answer the final question for the lesson. So if we have negative 1260, automatically we're going to know we're going to put the negative one at the front, but we need to figure the other prime factors. So they've decided that since this is ending in a zero, it's going to be uh a multiple of 10. So 10 times what number is going to be equal to 1,260? Go ahead and answer that for me now. Okay, so basically I'm just going to take this 0 off and what we're left with is 126 because that's how we multiply by 10s. And so 2 is a, multi 2 is a factor of 10, so 2 times what number? 5. And then we have 126. So this one is not going to be such an easy fact. So we're going to have to actually divide 126 by 6. Go ahead and do that for me now. 6 will go into the 12 tens two times. We subtract that, we get a 0, bring down the 6. And so it's actually going to end up being 21. And then we have 6 is a composite number because it's even. And if it's even, we can actually multiply that something by 2 to equal it, so that's going to be 3. And we're going to bring this 5 down because 5 is a prime number, which leaves us with the last two factors we need to come up with for 21. What two numbers are prime numbers that multiply together that equals 21? Answer that for me now. Okay, so that answer is actually 3 times 7. So if I were to now create uh, the expression that is going to be equivalent, I'm going to write 2, I'm going to mark it out, times 2, mark that out, times 3, mark that out, times 
3, mark that out. And you'll notice I'm very careful about writing these in order, but also marking them out as I go, times 5, times 7. Okay, so now this is what they end up with. Of course, we have the negative 1 because that's a negative number. But how did they get 2 to the second power? Well, there were 2, number 2, so the base is 2, and the exponent is going to be 2. There were 1, 2, 2, 3, so that's going to be 3 to the second power. And then there was just 1, 5, and 1, 7. So the uh, that's going to be negative 1 times 2 squared times 3 squared times 5 times 7. Okay, now I want you to think about what is the most important thing that we learned during this lesson. And if you can't remember, please just go back and look at the pages and come up with something, but I don't know, or just writing a dot or something like that is not going to give you credit for this question, so please think about this now.